you are still ah, okay nice to hear and also nice to meet you again Achan. okay today it is really our pleasure and really our honor that you can come and you can share your experience during your research which is dealing with the fungi how the fungi uh, degrade the biomass that you are really dealing with and we are very happy that we can share that you can share with us how mm -hmm. it is work and how is the benefit of this fungi for us and because uh, the student here with us is master program and also undergraduate program, but uh, mostly they have the background of microbiology, biotechnology, and biology molecular. Then please don't worry about the background and you can talk anything, any advance that you can share with us. We will follow whatever what uh, you have already got and what have you already achieved. Okay, before we start, please student, I would like to introduce a little bit about the Achan Wichani. I will call Achan Nam because this her nickname is Nam. It is it's nice to uh, have her now. Please, I would like to share a little bit about her curriculum vitae. Okay, Achan Nam. Achan Nam, uh, or the name Wichani Bankeri. Please uh, apologize if I just are uh, wrong. Uh, expel your name, Achan Nam. And he, she is now since... Uh, 2017, she is uh, a teacher or lecturer for Plant Biomass Utilization Research Unit in the Department of Biology, Faculty of Science, Shunalongkorn University. And she got her PhD, uh, master degree, uh, sorry, for uh, under the undergraduate program and master program uh, with the biotechnology background. Uh, she got from the King Mongkot Institute of Technology, Lan Krabang. And also, she is doing the PhD uh, in the Chulalongkorn University, Bangkok, and she finished her PhD in 2015. And now she is a lecturer for the Chulalongkorn University. And the, for the academic uh, career, she is quite young, yeah, and she has a lot of experience. Do, even she is young. She is a uh, research assistant, research assistant for Chulalongkorn, and also doing a postdoctoral research. Uh, finished in 2017. She got a lot of numbers of publication. I'm not really able to mention one by one here. Maybe I can sell the CV of uh, Achanam for you, but the latest one, she are uh, really dealing with the production prebiotic aubacin, ha, sorry, aubacin, aubacin dan like beta glucan for from aure basilium tali dan Tali dance. Oh, sorry. Tali Thailand dance. dance. Ah, okay. Thailand dance. Ah, you got this one from the Thailand, correct? Yes. Ah, okay. This is a little bit uh, because Achan uh, Sehanat uh, share about the Aerobasidium pululans. This one, Aerobasidium pululans. Now you got a new species for coming from the Thailand. It's really nice hearing about this one. And then she got also same like uh, Achan Sehanat. She also had get patent. Uh, the first one, it unfortunately, it is in uh, Thailand. The second one, uh, dealing with the formulation. This is really nice having the formulation. How to get the active formulation in order to prove to increase the activity of enzyme for decolorization of a uh, textile dye. Okay, this is about the Achan uh, Nam. I would like to, I, before I give you the time to you, Achanam, would you like doing by yourself for the PPT, sir, or you need us to help you? Oh, can I share this one by myself? Okay, that's true. Sure. That's it. Uh, committee, Pa Arif, have you already give Achanam the possibility to share screen? Uh, yes, maybe Pudina, could you? Make the Achanam to be a co-host, please. Virginia, could you help us to, to give the access for Achanam to share the screen? It's done, Parif. It's all right uh, as the co-host. Hello. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, ah, Budina. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. thank you, Budina. And also, thank you, Pak Arif. Okay, Achanam, time is yours. Okay. 
Um, thank you very much for Professor Maya to invite me today to join this lecture. Um, this is my first time to give the lecture to Indonesian students. Um, um, I mean, like out of Tulalongkorn University, because in my lab I have a lot of Indonesian students. So yeah, it's very fun for me to talk with Indonesian people. <laughs> Okay, and the topic that I would like to talk today is about the plan liberating fungi. Um, this is very uh, popular in Jualongkorn actually, because uh, you can see from these pictures, this is my campus. We are trying to claim ourselves like a green campus because we are worried about the sustainable um, for using like a plastic or something. So we're trying to reduce the using of the plastic. Another way is by using of the fungi to produce some biomaterial and also for the compost some waste. So the fungi is the famous topic or research within my universities. And okay, you can see around in my universities. This is a lot of the building because we are located in the economic area. So it's a lot of shopping mall in here. Um, sometimes my student is left from the class because they want to go to shopping. So it's, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's happened like that, but it's okay. And this is the area of Jualongkorn University. I'm sorry, I will try to connect my pen. Okay. Okay, sorry, I cannot. Okay, you can see from this one, all of this one is my campus area. So it's quite big. It's composed with a lot of faculties. And for the faculty of science, this is the pictures of the faculty of science. It's quite beautiful, right? And this is the new uh, learning and oh sorry. This is the learn co-learning area that we just launched last year because we have a lot of online class. And this is my favorite coffee shop in here. So if you have a chance to come to the lab, please let me know and I will introduce you about my faculties. And also in my faculty, we have a lot of museums. This is the live museum about the biology. So we have a lot of policy in science. Uh, and this is the dean. This is the dean, the first dean in our faculties. Uh, he just like uh, donate his body to another person to study about humans. And this is the life museum for the plan. It belongs to all my department. So if you can come to Jolalongon University, it has a lot of extinct species inside. If you are interested, we can go to side seeing around of this one. And for this one is my research unit. Actually, we working together. Uh, I have three more professor that working with me. Professor Hansa now is retired. He is the professor emeritus. So he is the founder of this research unit. And now Professor Fong Talin, he is the head of research unit. And for Professor Hansa, I think someone ever entered to his lecture class before. So he is, is the head department now. And this is me. 10 years ago. <laughs> Sorry, if not, same with me now. It's okay. Still similar. And this is a, <laughs> yeah, and still this is young. A, <laughs> thank you. And this is the research area that we work in this research unit. The first, because our unit is the plan utilization. So we work everything about the plan.
do, do you, okay. So we were like, I'm so sorry. So do you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, could you a little bit louder? Dec decreasing your voice. Uh, do you hear me now? A student, can you hear? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I have to talk about my. No problem. Uh, uh, Achanam, a little bit echo there. You have a background, background so, uh, sound. Is this better for, for this one? Not really. Oh. Okay, I will. I'm so sorry about this. But still, okay, I can still hear your voice, but not really. Uh, it's very tiny, tiny for a uh, voice. Maybe you can put your settings for the audio to be maximum or a bit louder. So is it better now? Ah, yeah, this better. Maybe without the video, na? Okay, sorry okay. for this. <laughs> but this okay. Can you uh, can you uh, you still able to do a share screen? Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um yeah, this is for the research area in my research unit. So we work with the biomagitalization by directly and indirectly. The indirectly is mean like um we're working with the fungi that we isolate. Uh, we work with the fungi that we isolate to form the plant. So, and then do you will know today about the fungi that we uh, isolated from, from the plant. And for, for giving more information about the races, so can I get some, can I talk in brief about the general information about the fungi? Yes, yes. And, <laughs> I will try it in brief, okay. And so it could be start from the question, what is the fungus or what is the fungi? So I will keep just a short word like uh, the fungus is the eukaryote. And then this is a heterotope because they cannot produce um, nutrient inside like a plant, but they need some food. Uh, outside by secrete some enzyme and then obtain some nutrients into the mycelium and then they grow. And this fungi can happen like a biotope or separatope or necrotope. The biotope is mean they can live in the living host, but for the separatope is live from the dead plant or animal. And for the necrotope is like they infect the living host and then kill the host cell to obtain the nutrients. So it's quite vary our diversity from the uh, fungi for this one. And how all of the fungi is based on the fossil evidence, like uh, in Jurassic Park, you can see here. I'm sorry, you can see from here. Uh, this is the fossil evidence. And then 
they farm some insect and also some mycelium that infect with the insects. So they estimate that the O of the fungi is around 460 to 454 million years ago, but it's not ancient like a bacteria. But actually it's now they have more evidence about the molecular technique to present. So they expect that the fungi is stay in our earth more than 1 billion years ago. And from this one is like a pilometer fungi can be found uh, earlier than the vascular pen. So some scientists are thinking like uh, this fungi may be um, associated with the non-vascular pen before. And from the new evidence that we found on 2011, they found some fossil and then the figure is like this. So it looked like some mushroom, the gill of the mushroom. So it means the structures of the mushrooms from 400 billion years ago is like look like the same in now today that we found. So do they have some evolutions about the structure or something? This is still mystery for the scientists to try to find the evidence, more evidence. And how many of the fungi are there? So this is another question. Because if you see from this graph, it's around 99,000 species of fungi have been described from uh, 1830 to 1820s. But the new species, new species is the green one, uh, the dark green. It's, we still find a new species in each year. And it's the rate of the new species is around 1,000 species isolated per year. So how many of the fungi? And then they have some study to try to isolate the filament of fungi from the border in the national, national um, park between the border of the Poland and Belarus. This is the virgin forest. So after they're trying to enter in this site, they can isolate around six fungal species per one native plant species. It means uh, in this area is have around 250,000 species of the plants after we close with the seeds. So it estimates around 1.5 billion species of the fungi. So why now today they are at around 99,000 species reported. So it's still a lot of fungi that, have, that we still not explore. But however, the one thing that, that we are worried about this is about the extinct of the species of the fungi because uh, now today, the tropical forest is like at least, uh, lo sorry, lost around 2% in each year because of some fire on human made. So maybe some species is still mystery to discover and then they just lost during the loss of the forest. And what do fungi do? It means what is the important of the fungi. So the fungi can associate with the animal, like in the these pictures. Uh, we call this one is the zombie ant because after infected with the fungi, the fungi will grow and do the mind controlling with, with the ant. So they will control the ant to climb into the tree and eat the tree. And then the ant will be trapped with this tree and then the growth of the fungi will be separate. And then the, they can like uh, produce a lot of spore and then infected with another ant that living around these areas. And this one is like a uh, more pathogens of, but another fungi that have some benefit to us is like uh, the cordyceps. This is one of the fungi that grow in the worm. And you can see this is the different state of the growth of the cardiac. So in the first state, that is still not produce some spore and they're just infected and produce some structures of the, of the fungi. 
and the Lawa is still firm. They will have the highest economic value because at that time, they have a lot of secondary metabolites and the medicinal activities. But after we living for a long time, but the Lawa is still firm. This one can be used as the medicine. But for the next step that they produce some spore and then the metal spore is happened in this both step. Um, the secondary metabolite is reduced and then they have the low value. And this is the product, like a cordyceps in Thai. In Thai, we call Tang Chao. And this one, we, um, we believe that there can enhance the immune system in our bodies. And this is the benefit for the fungi. But they have some mystery happened in the zoological park in Smithsonian Nationals. At that, at that place, they found that some flock is dead day by day. And after check with the, uh, the flock, it looked like they got the herd attack. And then the scientists just curious what happened with that flock, why they got the herd attack. So they try to uh, they try to check the system in size and they found some something happened with the skin of the flock because it looked like they got some infected with the fungi. You can see from this picture. This is the growth of the fungi. When the fungi is caught at the skin of the flock, they can uh, absorb some nutrient in size and then disturb some electrolyte balance between uh, the system of the flock and then they make the flock to cut the herd attack. And after that, this fungi is, can isolate. And this is the first time for isolate this kind of the fungi. And also for the nematode, we can find some fungi that uh, Achan? Have problem with your connection, Achan? Mm -hmm. We just miss contact because there is no PPT anymore. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, should we help you to uh, share the screen for you? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, that's mean. Okay. Uh, Siapa tadi Pak Arif? Saya lupa. Saya juga lupa. Um, maybe any of the students? Nathan. Nathan, Nathan ya. Yeah. Okay, Nathan ya. Yeah. Okay, Nathan, could you help? I'm so sorry for this. Because no problem. It's okay. Because the, the, weather, <laughs> the weather is not really good at the moment. It's very cloudy in, in, uh, in Surabaya. Maybe this also interfered our connection in between. Okay. Maybe you go, uh, Nathan, please go to the slide of the, un, uh, the, the what is it, the zombie un? <laughs> Okay, this one. Please oh, continue, you. Achan. Uh, next, next, please. And, and next slide, please. Nathan, next slide, please. Uh, next, please. <laughs> Maybe it's also a not really good connection. Oh, okay, good. Okay, this, uh, next, please. Okay, thank you. And this is a fungi that associate with our human body. So they can cause up some dermatophyte, like uh, they can grow on our skin to eat some dye keratin and then growth. And then they can make some symptom of this one. And this is the least of the fungi that can happen. Like uh, this one we call ringworm on the hand. And sometimes it can happen with the baby by infected with the candida is the candidasis you can see from the tongue they have the white plaque on the tongue or the leaf 
next please and also read some kilometer function is so harmful like in aspergillus last few minutes. after we inhale some spore this spore can grow inside the lung and then there we have some problem about the inhaler system and one more thing is very big uh, Danger is the pneumocolosis kalini because this one is got the symptom same with the pneumonia, but it's not from the protozoa. So when the diagnosis of the doctor, they we got they will give some anti protozoa drug, but the symptom is not better because it's not the protozoa. But this one is come from the fungi. So this. Fungi is the cause of the date from the AIDS patent, Pat patent, sorry. Next, please. Um, fungi not only associate with the animal, but they also associate with the plant. And most of the plant disease is caused by the fungi, like in smut and slime. This one can cause of the plant pathogens and this is the video to show you why the plant one plant can infect it with oh um, you, you cannot open the video i'm sorry it is video yes okay uh nathan uh, it's possible to open the video uh because she obtained because the pdf right the PDF, yeah. ah okay okay can I try to share my screen again? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for this one. Plants are under constant threat from invaders. This wheat crop stem is being attacked by a parasite. The parasite is called rust, although it is actually a type of fungus. The invading rust fungus has penetrated deep inside the plant tissue. As the invasion progresses, the fungus produces spores. These spores erupt from the surface of the plant. The spores spread, creating pustules, new sites of infection. Soon the plant's stem and leaves are covered in fungal growth. Carried by wind, the fungal spores can travel great distances, eventually reaching other potential hosts. This spore must now find the nutrients it requires to grow. Sending out the germ tube, it seeks an entry point into the plant. A newly formed penetration tube breaks inside the stem and the fungus extends further into the plant. Once inside the stem, another structure called the haustorium is used to penetrate inside one of the plant's cells. The fungus can now take nutrients from within the plant. It also begins to secrete small protein molecules called effectors This is a critical time for the plant. If it can detect the fungal effector proteins, it can try to stop the invasion. The plant has specialised resistance proteins which act like an immune system. The resistance proteins can bind to the fungal effector proteins. This binding event alerts the plant that an infection is taking place. 
Now that the parasite is detected, the infected cells are sacrificed, cutting off the energy supply to the invader. The fungus will eventually starve and the plant can continue to grow. New strains of fungi are constantly developing through evolution. This can make some plants vulnerable to infection. Diseases like rust fungus have plagued crop production since people first began farming. Globally, infections of rust destroy 15 million tonnes of wheat each year. Because of this, wheat breeders must vigorously seek new sources of resistance to protect crops. Perhaps by investigating the interactions between plants and their invaders, we could one day prevent the devastation caused by rust fungi. <laughs> okay, Achan, Achan Wichani has a problem how to unmute. Uh, can I, the committee make an unmute for her speaker? Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the question why some, um, some strain of the plant can resist to the fungi, but some strain cannot because they have some special protein to trap with the molecule and then they will let the cell that infected to die. So this is the concept that some research, they're trying to uh, transform some genes to produce this protein inside of the plant to make the plant is tolerant with some fungi. But even we try to do that one, the rust, fungi still have some, uh, they still have some development of themselves. Okay. Tail, tail, reddish brown. I'm sorry. And they still have some development of themselves like uh, in Europe because weed is one of economic plant in there. So, but after infected with the rust, the productions of the weed is reduced. So they try to eliminate all of the weed inside that area to let's see what happened with the rust fungi. But the rust fungi still can develop themselves to use another host like uh, in Barberry to be the host for them to survive. After they survive in Barberry, they can go back to infected with some weed. And then this video will show you how the rust can de develop themselves for two hosts, two unrelated host species with this one. Tail tail reddish brown powder found on infected wheat plants are spores of the fungus Puccinia graminus, the organism that causes stem rust. A single pustule can produce tens of thousands of these spores, called uridinia spores, with each one capable of infecting a wheat plant and producing yet another pustule. Carried by the wind, perhaps to a neighboring plant, perhaps to another wheat field hundreds or even thousands of miles away, a microscopic uridinia spore can land, germinate, and cause new infection. Once inside the host tissue, the pathogen extracts nutrients from the wheat plant cells, grows, and eventually produces a new generation of uridinia spores in such abundance that the plant's tissue erupts, releasing the new spores into the air to repeat the infection process elsewhere. On and on the cycle goes. With roughly two weeks from infection to sporulation, this cycle of uridinia spore multiplication can rapidly produce epidemic levels of disease. 
A severe stem rust infection in the field is a dramatic and devastating sight, but it is not the whole story. An important point about the uridiniospore cycle of infection is that it is a clonal method of spore production. Random mutations, genetic copy errors, and potentially rare cases of asexual hybridization aside, uridiniospores infect weak tissue and produce exact copies of themselves. For a highly virulent race of stem rust like UG99, it is this cyclical process of spore multiplication that causes epidemic levels of disease within a season and necessitates the development and deployment of resistant wheat varieties. What a perfectly clonal cycle does not explain fully is the emergence of new virulent races. For this, it is instructive to shift our attention away from the wheat host plant and to continue to follow the pathogen. As the growing season comes to an end and wheat plants begin to set seed, senesce, and die, the stem rust pathogen does something remarkable. Instead of producing more uridiniospores, it begins to produce black overwintering spores called teliospores. Although teliospores cannot infect wheat, they are important for two reasons. First, they can survive in a dormant state on dead wheat stubble, something the more sensitive uridiniospores cannot do. And second, it is in the teliospore stage that the two haploid nuclei fuse together, the first step toward creating new genetic variation and possibly new virulence. A period of cold temperatures is part of the environmental requirement to break the dormancy of a teliospore, at which point it can germinate and produce, through meiosis, haploid spores called basidiospores. Incredibly, these basidiospores infect not wheat, but certain species of the completely unrelated woody perennial plant genus Berberus, or barberry. Transported by the wind to barberry plants near wheat fields, basidiospores can germinate, infect, and create blisters called spermogonia on the upper surface of barberry leaves. These blisters produce reproductive cells called spermatia, able to fertilize receptive cells called hyphae inside compatible neighboring spermogonia. In this step of fertilization, entirely novel genetic combinations are achieved. Once fertilized, the hyphae grow down through the barberry leaf, where they eventually produce stunning reddish pustules on the underside of the leaf, marked by numerous peach or orange-colored tube-like structures called esia. When exposed to moisture, these esia, quite visible to the naked eye, forcefully eject the next spore form of stem rust, esiospores, carrying entirely new combinations of genetic material due to the cycle of sexual recombination on the alternate host, barberry. These microscopic esiospores can once again directly infect wheat, producing the brownish-red uridiniospores that are the hallmark of this disease. The complex and amazing life cycle of Puccinia graminis suggests that achieving durable resistance to wheat stem rust depends not only on the critical task of developing more resistance in the primary host plant, wheat, but also on investigating the prevalence and functionality of the alternate host, barberry, and utilizing knowledge of the complete life cycle of the stem rust pathogen to limit the emergence and survival of new virulent races. Um, this is why they try to produce a different type of the spore. This one is the sexual spore and asexual spore. Um, the asexual spore will be produced in the wheat. And for the sexual spore will be produced in the barberry. The sexual spore will have the thickening or cell membrane. So they can tolerate with the low temperatures. So that's why they want to survive. So that's why they need to select two different hosts. From this one. Tail, tail. And not only the this toy, not only got some uh, infection and got some virulence of the outbreak, but fungi also can help the growth of the plant, like in mycorrhiza. This one is the 
the fungus root because they can grow associate with the root of the plant. They can divide it into three different types of the endomycorrhiza, ectomycorrhiza, and ectendomycorrhiza. For endomycorrhiza, they can penetrate inside of the cell of the plant root. And after the spore attack, they will produce some special uh, character like a hydrocodium to attack with this. Uh, cell wall of the plant, and then they will penetrate in size and produce some abascu, this one, for absorb some nutrient from the plant. So because this character we call abascular endomycorrhiza, and another one is call endomycorrhiza, this one is specific with some uh, plant, like in here is the orchid specific endomycorrhiza and for ectendo sorry and for ectomycorrhiza they can produce some mantle outside of the root and then when they penetrate inside they will penetrate between the gap between the cell so it's not penetrate inside the cell and make the network between the gap of the cell so we call this one is the hatting net so for ectomycorrhiza so my colizer is like a, the outside of the growth, this one. But for endomycorrhiza, it's growth inside of the cell. But for ectendomycorrhiza, they will uh, have two characters by growing outside and growing inside of this. So the mycorrhiza will help the plant to fix some nitrogen so uh, the plant can grow well more than non-infected plant. And for the fungi associated with plant that we will study today is about the pan-degradating fungi because only 10% of the fungi can colonize on the living plant by another one uh, will be growth from the dead plant and they will become like a decomposer. And the decomposer of the fungi is come from, they can produce some enzyme. We call lignolytic enzyme. So we can separate by the mechanism, by two roots of them. The first one is hydrolytic enzyme. It means they need some water to stimulate uh, to degradation. And another one is oxidative enzyme. In case of hydrolytic enzyme, it's like the cellulase and hemicellulase. Cellulase also divided into three types of the enzyme, like the endoglucanase, exoglucanase, and glucosidase. And in case of hemicellulase, because the structure of hemicellulase is quite diversity, so the enzyme is actually this is the enzyme that that like the sorry the enzyme that degrade the main chain of the hemicellulose. Actually, they have some oxalate enzyme that can degrade the side chain of the hemicellulose. And in case of the lignin, we also divide it into two group of phenol oxidase and peroxidase. Phenoxidase is the lactase, and peroxidase is lignin peroxidase and manganese peroxidase. So I will give more information about the cellulase. So if we see from the structure, this is the structure of the cellulose. Oh, sorry, structure of the cellulose. It's composed with two regions of the crystalline. So uh, this one is like the crystal. They can pack and then they can make some hydrogen bond between each polish polymers. But for the amorphous regions, they will like a, not tightly binding, but it's a loose structures. So at this area, it's suitable for the endoglucanase for trapped into this polymer and degrade into uh, oligomer, like a thigh disaccharide or disaccharide. And after that, the beta glucosidase will be digested from the dry or disaccharide into the monomer of the glucose like this. In case of the trisaccharide, they will digest to be di, and after that, they will attack again to digest into the final product of the glucose. But the beta glucosidase cannot trap with the long chain polymer around less than 10 molecules. 
And another type of resellase is exoglucanase, or we call cellulobiohydrolase. This one is specific with the crystal legions, so they can attack at the end of the polymer, and then they can digest the polymer into di or trisaccharine. And also they have some another oxidase, oxidation enzyme also. This one is can produce by special type of the fungi that I will talk later about this one. And in case of chemi, so as I told you before, because the structure is quite very like in sawbu and the plant like a gymnosperm, they will contain like a uh, galactomene and alabino glucosylene, alabino galactane. So the main chain of this one is the mannan and silane. In case of the hardwood also, they can uh, we can find some glucoronosilane, glucomannan. And in case of cereal or glass, mostly we found rabinosilane. So it means we found silane in every type of the plant. So the enzyme that like a in have the much influence for the grade of the hemicellulose is the silanase or we call endocylanase because they can trap to the silan like a randomly. Even inside of the polymer chain, they can also uh, trap. Um. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, I try to make the pointer. Uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> this is an endocyanase. So it's like a randomly attack inside of the polymer. So they can uh, degrade the main chain. This is the main chain of silane. And this is the side chain. The side chains. In case of the silanase, they cannot uh, trap with the main chain that's very close with the side chain. So that's why we need some oxalic enzyme to degrade the side chain first. And then the silanase can be trapped and then they just for this one. So we can say like an endosilanase is the one of the major group for the hemicellulase. And in case of the lignines, because the structure of lignin is composed with the phenolic compound like this, they have some aromatic ring. So it's very hard to uh, digest or break the ring. So we need some special enzyme like an oxidoreductase enzyme. And the enzyme can be divided into two groups. The first one is peroxidase. You can here you can see from this one, this one is the lignin peroxidase. This one is the manganese peroxidase. Both of them require the hydrogen peroxide to catalyze or to break down the ring of the lignin. But in case of the lactase, case, they don't need the hydrogen peroxide, they can work directly by oxid oxidation, some uh, reactive species, and then cleave it, the rings of the lignins. And the mechanism for the grade of the plant uh, is start with uh, when, the fungi, when the fungi is trapped inside uh, when the plant is infected with the fungi, the fungi will try to penetrate inside of the structure of the plant. And this is the structure of the plant that they have the cellulose, like a, the fiber inside. And the cellulose will be uh, bonding with the hemicellulose, the green one, this one. And the hemicellulose is bonding with the lignin. Lignin is the important structure because they can make the lipid Lividity of the plant, as you can see from the structure, is the phenolic group, so it's quite strong. So, how to degrade the plant? It means we have to degrade the lignin and hemicellulose first, and after attack the fungal attack, they will release some enzyme to degrade the lignin and try to degrade the bonding between lignin and hemicellulose, and finally. Uh, in some fungi, if they have some cellulase, they will try to digest the cellulase. And then you can see the rot, the rotten of the plant. 
And for the rotten of the plant, we can separate the fungi into three main groups of the white rot fungi, bar rot fungi, and soft rot fungi. The dividing is depend on the ability to produce the enzyme. In case of white rot fungi, all components can be removed. It means they can produce cellulase, hemicellulose, and lignines. In case of bar rot fungi, lignin is moderate limin, so it means these fungi cannot produce lignines. And in case of soft blood fungi, some lignin loss, some of lignin loss mean uh, they can produce the ligninase, but it's not well functions when compared with the virot fungi. And this is the example of the virot fungi. You can see from here, this is the mushroom. Uh, they can like, uh, even the, the Protein body of the mushroom, they have some another colors, but they also become the white rot fungi because when we try to identify the fungi, we not, I mean, identify by the ability, we not identify by the color of the protein body, but we identify based on the material that they grow. In this case, you can see the white color from here. That's why they call white rot fungi. This white color is uh, occur because some ligninase can degrade lignin. Lignin is the brown color. So after degrade, the brown color is disappear. Only the white color of the cellulose and hemicellulose is still remain like this. And the wild fungi normally in basidiomyces virot because they can mineralize lignin into carbon dioxide. Only the wild can do these abilities. But some of ascomyces fungi also the white rot, but they are the pseudo, pseudo white rot, or sometimes they also occur like a soft blood, like in Siberia. And mostly of the white rot can be found on your sperm more than gymnosperm, while the bar rot always found in the gymnosperm. And because they can degrade all of the component in size with the equal rate, but some of the viral fungi, they have high ability to produce the ligninase more than another one. And that is the interesting strain because some application, we need only the ligninase while we not require the uh, cellulase. And this is the example like a phenorchy, chrysosporium, pyrotas, pignoparas, something like this. Another type is the barot fungi. This barot is because they cannot degrade the lignin. So you can see from this material after infected with the barot fungi. You can see, um, you can see the structure in here. Uh, this structure is still have some uh, cell wall in size because the lignin is not degrade. Or in this one, this is the Brown rot. You can see the material is still contained with the brown. And the depolymerase of the polysaccharide normally they okay. The depolymerase of polysaccharides normally they occur by hydrolysis, the hydrolytic enzyme. But in the brown rot, they not occur by the hydrolytics, but they occur by the oxidative component. Because the ballot can produce like oxalate and reactive chelators and hydrogen peroxides. After they secrete this one, oxalate will trap with the ferric dichlorides and introduce this chelate into the plant cells. This chelate will be react with the reactive chelatings to become the reactive oxidized, and this one will be grow out from the cell to be the reactive chelators at the environment, why the ferric tricholine will be changed to ferric to choline and react with hydrogen peroxide. And finally, this is called the phantom reactions. And then finally, we will produce the reactive species. And this reactive species can be uh, degraded with the lignocellulose component. So the system of the bar rot and white rot is different. The bar rot will be produced like a silanase, uh, cellulase and do the hyaluronic activity, but in case of the barrock, it's oxidative activities. 
and in the barat fungi because it's no lignin degradation but sometimes some small molecules of the lignin can be oxidized so we can find the oxidized form of the lignin from the material also but it's happened in some species and for the decay wood there is it, you can see the brown color like this because the remaining of the lignin, but um, only 10% of the wood decay is the bar rot. So it's very hard to find the bar rot. And as I tell you, this is occur in the conifer wood because, uh, because they occur with the gymnosperm more than angiosperm. And this bar rot can use to make the humus from the soil and they can stay in the soil up to 300 years. The for example of this one is like a Coninophila putena, something like this. And in these pictures, we can see the difference between bar rot and white rot fungi. This is the bar rot. You can see the brittle of the wood and then the color of the wood is still like a brown. And in C pictures, this is the white. And in C picture, this is the white color of the decay wood. Even the color of the colonies of the fungi is different, but um, they can they cannot use the colony of fungi to identify what type of the fungi like a white rod or bar rod. And for the last one is the soft rod fungi, soft rod fungi, mostly in ascomyces. You can see from here, the material after they infect with the fungi, they can produce like a, the soft or they can declare into the water like this. For this one, like infected with the aspergillus or in here like a lysophastic infected. And this one is the uh, infected with some aspergillus. So the soft loss fungi is like the most found fungi that like your aspergillus, nulospora or silalia. Silalia, as I mentioned before, this one is can be a pseudo virus or soft lot also because the mechanism to degrade some plant is still complicated to explain. And because the soft rot fungi is important to uh, for the scientists to study about the post harvest, because we try to prevent the growth of the soft rot fungi to because the growth of soft rot fungi can reduce the weight of agricultural products around thirty three percent. So you can lose some uh, economic value of the plant after this. And the enzyme from the soft rot fungi, they can they also can produce the lactase and peroxidase. It means they can degrade some part of the lignin. But as I tell you that they limit in the function. So it's not completely degrade of the lignin. So for application of the plant degrading fungi, we can apply for the biorefinery process. That is the process for using some feedstock or the plant biomass. Normally, we focus on agriculture waste or something that uh, priceless. After we try to put treatment, this is to loosen the complex structures between lignin cellulose and hemicellulose. After we try to lose the structure of this, we reduce the enzyme that produce from the fungi to degrade some polymer in size. Uh, most in the biology, finally, we don't need the lignin because lignin is like the barrier for enzyme penetrations. And lignin, because the, the structure is very complicated and it's very hard for apply to another, to another product. So mainly we focus on the cellulose and hemicellulose. And after we, try, uh, we degrade, the polymer of cellulose and hemicellulose, we will obtain the sugar, like a glucose, cellulose, arabinose. This sugar can be used as a 
substrate for yeast or another microorganism in the fermentation process to produce a lot of valuable product. Um, like uh, now today in Japan, they try to uh, produce the biofuels from the field. So this is a platform to produce some uh, biofuel also. And all the chemical reagents depend on what kind of uh, microorganism that you use for the fermentations and what is the final product that you will obtain. And for me, I focus on using the enzyme also, but I quietly focus on the bioremediation agents like uh, lignin degradating fungi because uh, we, we have to face with some pollution now today. The pollution from the incomplete burning of organic chemists, organic compound. For example, like a fire in the forest. This is a fire in Kalimantan. And maybe two years ago, we have the big fire in Amazon in Brazil, or even the, the smoke from the vehicle that we use now today, this one is also got some incomplete burning. And from this incomplete burning, they will create some pH or poly aromatic hydrocarbon. This is the structures of them. Uh, this is the structure that can be inside of the air. They can floating in the air, and after accumulation in our body, they can become the carcinogen to produce some cancer. Or if they have some raining, the carcinogen or PAH that floating in the air can be contaminated in the water bodies. And after we use that water, we can accumulate the PAH also. So it's quite dangerous. Another toxic compound that we concern now today is uh, textile dyes. This dye, sometimes they just, uh, from the industry, they just release into the water body. Like these two pictures come from China. Some dye that after use, they just directly release from the textile industries. And this dye is actually is not toxic, but uh, they have the strong structures because they compose with the acyl group like this. So it's very hard to degrade the acyl group. Or even you try to degrade by using of the chemical like a use of sodium dithionide like this. After you try to degrade acyl dyes because they have composed with the acyl group of N double bond in this one. When you degrade, you will got the amine. And this amine is the carcinogen also. So it means the chemical treatment of some dye is not suitable. So we need more environmentally friendly technique to degrade this dye. So we expect that uh, the light case can be used to degrade this PAH and ASO dye because light case can degrade the aromatic link. So we expect they can degrade the compound that have aromatic ring also. And the lacase, they accepted for a broad range of the substrate, more than ligninase, uh, more than another ligninase. And after we are trying to use the lacase and analyze the final product from this, is the non-toxic product. So based on this concept, in my laboratory, we try to isolate the wild fungi because wild fungi is the high potential for producing of lignines. And during this, one of the students, she from Kalimantan, Mulawaman University, she can isolate. She isolate a lot of wild fungi, but she can obtain two new records from Indonesia. These two fungi is special, quite special because they call resupinate fungi. Resupinate fungi is mean they grow as flat as the surface by not produce some uh, fruiting body. So it's very hard to identify. We use only the molecular technique to identify what species of them. And then she got to new record. 
uh, in Thai also, uh, student from Thailand, she tried to isolate a lot of Brisopinit Ang Jai in national park in Thai. And she also ob obtained two new records of this. At the wire of Ang Jai that we obtained, it also showed ability to produce different types of the Lignines, like lignin peroxidase, manganese peroxidase, and lactase. At the first of our hypothesis, we expect that the lactase can degrade, die better than another one because they accept the broad range of the substrate. But for, based on this result, we found that the phenorchidae sodida, this one, uh, resupinate also because they will go flat like this. It looks like the surface of the wood, but actually this is the mushroom. The candida uh, phenorchidae solida can degrade 100% of reactive dye. But when we compare between the activity of the lactase and lignin peroxidase, we found that this strain can produce the highest lignin peroxidase when compared with another strain. So it means lignin peroxidase also played an important role for the degrade of the fungi also. And this is we try to analyze the final products of this. And this is before degradation and this after degradation. And for the phytotoxicity, we try to taste with a different kind of plant, like a uh, sorghum or a sea moist, something like this. And we check about the germination, tooth length, and root length. Is what found that the metabolite after treatment with the enzyme because we use the clue enzyme after treatment with the enzyme the azo dye is less toxic when compared with the initial dye. This one so it means lignines can help for the bioremediations of the azo dye also, and this is paper is also published. And in case of the PAH, because PAH is quite complicated for degradations, we also try to degrade the PAH by quite a lot of fungi also. And, but we found the interesting things from this because normally, uh, like case, even they don't need the hydrogen peroxide to catalyze the PAH, but they still need some mediators. Like case from some uh, viral fungi, they, they require the mediator for react to degrade the pH. But the Gandoderma lucidum that we isolate from Ganjanapuli, this one, they can work without the mediators. Even the activity is a little bit dropped. The degradation is quite dropped, but it's comparable by using our not using mediators, this one. This phenomenon also found in the pycnoporas that we try to isolate. So we treat with the pH also, and then without the ABTS, some reaction, they have the higher activities when compared with non-mediator. Oh, sorry, when compared with the mediator, this one is we add the mediator, and this one we didn't add the mediators. And the reaction that without the ABTS or the mediator, they can degrade phenantrine better than add the mediator. So it's interesting. So it means the enzyme that produce is depend on the type of the fungi that we try to isolate. And because we found a good result for degradations of the PAH and ASO dye. So how can we try to scale up this process to the industrial applications? But for the industrial application, if we use just the enzyme, uh, it's quite difficult because the enzyme is cannot reusable. It means after you uh, treat with the enzyme, the enzyme is lost. So it's have high uh, production value. I mean, the process value is quite higher when compared by using of the chemical. That sometimes it can be usable of the chemical. So how can we reuse the enzyme? So one technique that I developed by myself is to interrupt the enzyme. Uh, 
I focus on the carrier that come from the natural polymer because uh, several papers have been reported by using the synthetic polymer. But finally, this synthetic polymer will be the waste because it's hard to degrade. And then they can become the waste that we need to treatment again. So maybe work with the natural polymer is better. So I focus on the silane. This is the one type of the hemicellulose. Silane I try to extract from the waste from pulp and paper industry because uh, in pulp and paper industry, they focus on the cellulose. In another component, they just like to throw it away. So I try to extract the silane from wastewater from that industry. And after obtaining the silane, I try to modify the functional group by using citric acid. This one is the citric acid. So we will got obtain the structure like this. So that silane will be bonding with the citric acid into size of this. After trying to modify, I will cross-link with the polyvinyl alcohol and boric acid. So I got the cross-link polymer like this. And this cross-link polymer can uh, make like a bead like this. This is the bead that make from uh, these reactions. So after I check the pore size of the bead, is quite less than 0 0.45 micron. So they can use to trap some enzymes. So I add the lactase together when I try to perform the bead and then I obtain the bead. That in size is contained with the lactase. And this lactase has come from the Tamiti Polysona, that one of student in my lab isolated from Thailand. And this one showed the high potential for the lactate productions. So I use this bit to pack into the column and treat with the reactive dye. And I try to check the character of the enzyme, what the free enzyme and immobilized enzyme. And it was found that the immobilized enzyme is more stable in the wider pH range when compared with the free lactase. And then I try to do the water treatment by using the maximum decolorization rate. So after trying with the sterile conditions at the 40 degrees Celsius, when incubation with the reactive dye 100 ppm for six hours, I found that the maximum is around uh, 98. So it's acceptable for me. So I use this condition to study about reusable of the bead. And this is the cycle that we use. Um, this bead can be used until the eighth cycle because the bead is will be break into like this. But I think when I try to calculate the production cost, I think it's already uh, enough for me. Because as I told you before, I don't need the bead that is hard to degrade because finally they will become the waste after treatment with the waste water. So this paper already published in 2016. And from this uh, immobilization technique, because I try to trap the inside, inside of the bead, it means the reaction will be occur when the water is penetrated inside of the bead. So the pore size is very important because if the pore size is too small, the penetration of wastewater inside is very high. But if the, if the pore size is quite big, it means enzyme can be released out to the bead. So we have to control the size of the bead, uh, the, the pore size of the bead very carefully. It is quite hard for this one. So I try to develop another technique by cutting the enzyme outside of the supporting materials like this. So the enzyme is outside. It means uh, we don't need the penetration of some wastewater. And the supporting material that I interest is the perlite. Perlite is artificial soil, not artificial soil. It's like uh, the some elements that used 
instead of soil in hydroponic plant. And I use just the expanding per like by asking some company after you, you want to throw away some per likes, can I obtain this one to do some research? And then I try to watch them uh, with the water several times. And then I try to uh, functional, I mean, modify the functional by use APTS. Because per like, it's mainly composed with the silica. This one, you can see silica oxide. So I use the APTS, APTS to react with the silica to make this one. This is the functional group of the modified functional group. And then I use glutaraldehyde for trap with the enzyme. So the finally is the enzyme that immobilize with the expanded perlite. And this is a picture of the perlite. You can see from the outer part of this one, they have the pore side also. So I expect some enzyme can be trapped inside of the pore side also. And after we try to modify the function of the perlite, you can see they have some uh, chill coving in the outer sides. And this one, after immobilizing with the lag case, we can see the lag case is trapped in the outer sides of the surface. Of this one. And I try to treat with the different type of the dye, like a reactive backfire, reactive blue, reactive red, and yellow. This one is selected based on the group of the ASO. Like in reactive backfire, they have dye ASO group. This is also dye ASO group. This is one. Oh, sorry. This is uh, actually they have three in here also. They have dye ASO group, and this one, one. Aso group, and all of them can degrade by the lag case from Tamitis polysona. So it means my technique to immobilize the lag case is success. And from this, I try to transfer this idea to one of my colleague in Lippi, but now they change to be burnt or something. I'm not sure because in Bahasa I I, I could not understand <laughs> what is the full name of them, but May I call Lippi first because I know him from the Lippi. And he obtained the same idea for me to uh, immobilize the lag case with the expanded clay akike, this one. Uh, he tried to steam activation the clay first and then do the reactions. And this is the immobilized lag case. After taste with the dye, they can degrade the dye also. So he tried to expand it or scale up into this rotary drum biological contractor. This is him, Dr. Dede. And this project, we obtained some funding from uh, JASTIP. And we have the host like a professor Watanabe in Kyoto University. It's me also, maybe five years ago. <laughs> Yeah, this is lottery drum. And then we explain the scale up to be used in the real industry. So we try to add the biological degradations into the normal uh, treatment process of the wastewater, like in here. And then we try to uh, use with the batik industry. But he talked to me is like an in-house factory, so and obtained a good result also. And from this technique to immobilize the enzyme at the outer of the carrier, I also continue my work for doing uh, immobilize, but not with the light case. So I try to immobilize with the beta glucosidase, this enzyme, because the enzyme can. Uh, Actually, the enzyme, normally they will do the hydrolytic to the gray, disaccharide to be monosaccharide. But some of the enzyme, they have some bifunctional functions. And then they can do the transcellosylation to produce. This is the polymer lines with the strong oxidative agent. 
And the beta cellulosidase is obtained from the oral basium pollen. This enzyme is intacellular, so I have to uh, degrade the cell to obtain the enzyme. And this enzyme can produce from oral basidium. Uh, this oral basidium, sometimes we call it the yeast like fungus. So it's the fungus, but they have some stain, uh, some stage that grow at the yeast. So they can produce a single cell like this. But this is the. Okay. So, but uh, they have some. Sorry, but they can like a filament that fungi also to produce like this. And after they grow old, they will produce chlamydial spore to be the black like this. So you can see the colony is turned from the pale pink to be the black one. And this stain can isolate from everywhere, even in the grasses, deserts, or in Thailand also. And in Thailand, we found one of our Vaseline Pololand that can work at high temperatures. So I continue to study for using the beta cellulosidase to produce some biosurfactant like a phenyl and hexyl like this. And this biosurfactant can be used for uh, treat with the oil split, like a dispersant for the oil split because sometimes when they have some oil contaminating in the waters, actually in the water, they have some bacteria that can degrade the oil. But if the droplet is quite big, the bacteria is cannot like a insert. Like a, it's very hard to attack. So if we can separate to be the small droplet, it's more easier. So this viral surfactant can separate the big drop into the small one, and then the bacteria can eat or and then this is also called the bioremediations. And this hemicellulase also can use to produce some prebiotic like a silo oligosaccharides from we can use from native glass, and this also control the prebiotic properties. And this fungi also can produce some mananase to uh, degrade the mannan that we use from the spin coffee grounds and to produce the mannan oligosaccharide. And they also show the some prebiotic properties. And the last paper that we published now uh, recently is about use of the beta glucan from Oreo Thailandins to produce. And this is the beta glucan. After we obtain the beta glucan, we're trying to apply for the functional food to make the jellies. I already eat and then I still find. So this product is truly fine. <laughs> and for another one, it's about cutin degradating fungi. So we try to isolate uh, the fungi that can degrade the cutin because if you see from the structure, the cutin structures is quite similar to Polycarbolicone because they have some ester link in here. And the ester link also found in pet of the plastic. So we expect that the cutinase can degrade some plastic like this also. But we didn't do with the plastic degradation, we're trying to do with the fabric treatment uh, because some polyester uh, is very hard to dye in because they are like a low hydrophobic city. So we have to treat them with the enzyme. And after treat with the enzyme, like a cutinase, we see that the, the wetting time is shorter and the moisture retain is higher. So it means we can use this enzyme for helping to dyeing the fabric. And this is all my research. Actually, it's not all, but because I have the tight time and I spend most of time for my problem about connection or something. I'm so sorry about this, but I would like to take time for this slide because this is um, Professor Han Sa. He is the father of my lab, Professor uh, Pong Talin, Professor Sihana. This is all my professor in the same lab. And this is Dr. Dede in Lipi that is working with the bioremediation together. So this is uh, Watanabe Sensei who give me the fundings and two of these person also give me the funding also, Professor Linti Akada and Professor Tashemi Imai from Yamaguchi University that 
give the opportunity for me to go to Japan also. And this is the student who helped me for working with this project. Okay, and I also thank you for your attention. And I hope my talk today will inspire you for some research idea or even help you to love fungi more than in the previously also maybe. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Ajahn Anam. This is really nice and inter uh, really interesting since you are really working with the uh, fungi. First, they just dis destroy everything in stepwise from, from the lignin state into the hemicellular state and then goes to the cellul cellular stage, maybe in the cellular bios, and then finally they go to the uh, glucose state. This is the most simply uh, carbohydrate that can be degraded by everyone. Okay, really nice uh, topic here. That's really clear enough also for the student and from this class i hope many questions will arise to discuss but before we go further on i would like to invite uh edwin tadi masih ada are you still here pak edwin pak erwin Okay, maybe because we forgot to Pak Erwin, I would like to invite Pak Arif Lukman. Please, Pak Arif Lukman, if you have any comment, and then I would like also to invite Ibu Wita because Bu Wita is also one of our expertise in fungi. Maybe you also want, would like to share uh, your experience with Achanam. Okay, first, Pak Arif Lukman, please. Yeah, thank you, Bu Maya. Uh, hello, uh, Dr. Bankiri. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for your very interesting talk and very informative, of course. Uh, I have maybe one small question regarding your interesting research topic about the, the lab case that you use for the entrapment in the hydrogel bead and also cross-linking in a, I don't know what's the name, the pet light or something like that. Yeah, yes. It's my, it's my voice audible, right? Yeah, okay. So my question is, uh, how can you entrap or cross-link the lag case without losing the activity of the lag case itself? And also maybe uh, how do you control the, the rate of the cross-linking and also the rate of the entrapment of the lag case into the beads to, to keep the beads or the, the pet light to be effective in the decolorization of the dye? Yeah, thank you. That's my question. Okay, thank you for your questions. Um, actually, for entrap of the lactose, I tried several times by using the ISM to predict the suitable factors of this, but I don't have time to show this one. You, you Maybe you can see from, from my uh, little later because my paper already published of this. And to prevent the loss of the activities, actually, I will mix uh, like case together with the substrate of them because I afraid the uh, catalytic size it can be like I react with some costling so I add a little bit of the substrate to like a competitive inhibition the active side for this one also ha, that's my result uh, that's my answer uh, yeah okay thank you very much because I think the 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 method is quite complicated, so you did so much troubleshooting for this, right? Yeah, thank you for your answer. I'll give it back to Bumaya. Okay, you. thank you, Pa Arif. Thank you so much for the question. But um, can I just uh, coming also to this uh, similar question, Achanam, because you are really dealing with the protein, with the enzyme, you just trap the enzyme with the cross-linking with the silica oxide and so on and other, other components. It is also you have the experience to uh, trap the microbes using uh, this method. Uh, for the microbe. Actually, I, I have not experienced with the micro before, but uh, mm -hmm. I think we can do this one with the micro. Okay, okay. Yeah, this because is... but we have to control the, the pore size because mm -hmm. less than 2.45 micron mm -hmm. is too less for the fungi to stay inside of the bee. But uh, for the bacteria, okay. it's maybe suitable for them. 
Ah, okay, okay, okay. Maybe because the fungi is be bigger than bacteria, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes, it is. Strong. Okay, thank you, uh, Achan Vichani. Maybe the next, if I'm coming there, we can try with my bacteria, yeah? I'm looking forward to this opportunity. Okay, I would like to invite Ibuita. Please, Ibuita, if you have something. Thank you, Bumaya. Uh, hello, Dr. Vichani Bankri. I'm very happy to join this guest lecture. Nice to meet you again. Okay, I just nice, uh, nice want to, to meet know. You. I just want to know um, that you have any experience in degrading biomass from palm oil, but fungus uh, in the most powerful to degrade it. And uh, what are the pretreatment most necessary to do? Uh, you mean the water from palm oil industry? The biomass uh, of palm oil. Oh, biomass, sorry. Palm oil. Palm oil. Um, okay, so um, actually I have one student that worked with the empty fruit branch of the palm, but they didn't do the degradation. They do, they try to extract the cellulose and then make it to be antioxidant film. And one of my students also, she tried to use the anti food brand to extract some hemicellulose to use hemicellulose as the film formation also. So uh, I'm, I'm not degrading them like this. Okay. Sorry for okay. this one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Maya, still... Mute. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Still <laughs> mute. Okay, thank you, Buwita. Uh, Achan Nam, maybe similar the question of the Buwita. Uh, before you doing your subject, dealing with your any kind of the subject that you use, you do a pre-treatment pre first for your subject? Yeah, sure. I, I do the uh -huh. pre-treatment first. What is it exactly with the chemical or physical pre-treatment? Actually, we have to do both of them because mm -hmm. um, even with, with the mechanical, mm -hmm. sometimes, mm, actually, because I need to separate a lot of uh, the different compounds. Like here, I, I forgot on cellulose also, hemicellulose also, and lignin also. So I want to degrade like here to, to be the small molecular. So I use the like here, natural technique. For mm -hmm. example, like a hot water treatment. Ah, okay, hot water treatment oh, first. Yeah, from from that one is mm -hmm. I, I prefer to do this one before because if we use like a acid mm -hmm. treatment, sometimes the hemicellulose is lost, so I can mm -hmm. utilize that hemicellulose. So I I don't like that kind of ah, the okay. person <laughs> actually. Okay, maybe with the hot water. Buita, maybe we can try with the hot water first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, hot hot water treatment is good because. Actually, from the hot water treatment, you can obtain uh, cellulose and hemicellulose will be dissolved in the waters. So mm -hmm. if you need to extract some hemicellulose, you can extract them from the water directly. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, really clear. Thank you. Thank you. And then I would like to invite students. Please raise your hand, students. Raise your hand. Please help me if I can see your hand, please. Okay, I got two hands here. First is Lucas Ad Egidus. Aduh, nama kalian susah sekali disebut ya. Lucas Edigius. Okay, sorry. Lady Jacobus and also the Gamma Goizani. Silakan tiga nama pertama. Uh, hello, Miss. Uh, thank you for the... Uh, hmm. I want to ask. I would like to ask to you yeah, about uh, regarding the potential of hemicellulose regarding fungi as a prebiotic. What kind of product produced by the aerobasidium pulver has it been tested to increase the growth of prebiotic in people? Thank you. Um, you already tested to people. <laughs> uh, Achan, could I just uh, come up with the question first, and then you can answer in the at once. Okay. Okay. Oh, you want? How do you prefer? You one question, one answer. Can I one question, one answer? Because oh, okay. I easy to forget. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. No problem. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure that I understand the question or not. Your question is like a, uh, hemicellulose can become the prebiotic, something like that. 
uh, how Hemisola can become the periodic or I'm, I'm not sure what is your question. Lucas, can you just repeat your question or you can uh, do it in Bahasa and Ta'arik will help you? Uh, okay. Okay, I would like to read it again. Uh, regarding the potential of the hemicellulose, regarding fungi as a prebiotic, what kind of product produced by the aureobacidium pullulans? Ah, okay. Okay, so um, aureobacidium pullulans, they can produce the enzyme like a, hemi like a silanase. After they degrade silanase, we will obtain silo oligosaccharide. That silo oligosaccharide, they show the prebiotic properties. Another size, this aureobacidium can produce the beta glucan. The beta glucan is the positive agent for enhance the growth of the bacteria, like uh, the probiotic. So it's a prebiotic also. So they have two root from uh, enzyme and for the beta glucan. Okay, clear, Lucas. Uh, it's very clear. Thank you for the answer. Okay, good. Thank you. And also, I go to Lady Yakabus. Um, okay, so thank you for the challenge. Um, hello, my name is Lady Jacobus. I'm from Biology. Okay, so my question is about aerobicidium. So, um, as you mentioned, the aerobicidium is a toxic uh, fungi. So, uh, I want to ask about how should we treat it to avoid the contaminations and infections? That's my question. Thank you. Uh, okay. Our obesidium pololan actually there is not a toxic, how can I say? It's not, they, they cannot the uh, human pathogen or plant. They are not plant pathogen also, but they grow associate with the plant. So mm -hmm. we can use that one to produce some food or agent without the biological, I mean like, a, we don't need to estimate the biological safety because it's already safe. Okay, it is safe, Lady Jacobus. It is not pathogenic for everyone, and every uh, this not pathogenic for plant and also for human. Okay, clear. Okay, thank you. And then I go to um, I look. Is this correct? I just look say look Sandia and also Rifki and also Salma Safira. Look Sandia. Look, Sandy, yeah? Uh, okay. yeah. Okay, ma'am. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. Hello, my name is Look, Sandy, yeah? uh, I have a question. Okay, is for the fusar fusarium falciform that can increase the hydrophilicity of the pet fabric. What is the mechanism behind? Does it increase the polarity of the pet? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, okay. From the fusarium, this is the high cutinate producing substrate. The cutinate can degrade the ester bond. After the ester bond was degrade, so the polymer is have higher uh, probicities. So the water can like uh, penetrate inside of the fi fabric. So after the water can penetrate inside, so it's more easier for dyeing. This is the mechanism of this one. Okay, looks yeah, it's clear. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, good, really good. And then I go to the uh, my master student, Muhammad Rifki Nur. Okay. Uh, hello, Ajarn. Uh, my name is Rifki, a master student from Department of Biology, ITS. I have uh, some questions. Uh, according to the presentation, it is mentioned that uh, the lignin it is less usable than cellulose and hemicellulose due to the complex of the structure. The structure. Uh, my question are, is it possible if we make a new strain that can produce more varieties of lignin modifying enzyme such as lactase or lignin pesticides and how the prospect with 
the genetic engineering in lignin modifying enzyme production and what kind of uh, possible species of fungi that have a uh, best possible potential to be engineered. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a good question. I think. Um, actually, lignin because they have the complicated complex, so it's very hard to convert to another kind of the chemical reagents. But actually, we can use lignin like uh, one of the component to make the concrete to be more stronger. We can use like that. But in case of your questions. Uh, you want to ask about the genetic modify of the lactase enzyme, right? Mm -hmm. In case of the lactase enzyme, if you want to modify, the first thing that I recommend to do is the uh, the binding size of the lactase because uh, we need enzyme that can trap with the variety of the substrate because we want to use the apply in several applications. So for the binding size, if you can modify to like a more broader of the substrate, it should be good. And from the source of the genetics, I recommend to use from the virus fungi because virus fungi is the high producing for the lactase, but you have to screen about the property of the enzyme first. Like if you need the lactase that can work at high temperatures, you have to screen the fungi that can produce the lactase that working at high temperatures and then try to do the uh, protein sequence and then do the amino acid sequence and try to do a nucleo nucleic sequence to check which one is responsible to which size and then you try to modify at the binding size. This is my recommend for that. Because you already got the efficient enzyme, just the binding size that we cannot control. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is really clear. Correct, Rifki? I yes. totally agree. Oh. This is a really good yeah. question also from you. How to control, uh, how to uh, manipulate the fungi is. Okay, really good. And maybe the last question, yeah? But Salma Safira, because we are just run out of the time. I'm so sorry, Achan, because now is... Um, <laughs> then pass one already, yeah. Okay, this, so you still okay, Achan? Okay, hi. Okay, the we last have... question is okay. Okay, the last question, please. Uh, uh yes. Excuse me, Mr. yes. Uh, excuse me, Bu Maya. Louder, siapa? Uh, Bu Awi. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, Bu Awi, you have a question. Uh, Mbak Mutiara Arin is for the plant is about fungi, fungi. Panjai, okay. Yes, yes. Maybe, but Mutiara, please, your question about your research. Okay, Mutiara, you have a question dealing with your uh, topic research? Yes, Bu. Yeah, okay. Actually, may I ask? <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. You can put a question to okay, Ajanam. Uh, related to my thesis, I want to research about bioremediation on Terotus, Terotus, Ibu, Terotus SP uh, toward to degradation uh, waste of rumah tangga, ini, limbah rumah tangga. Uh, yeah. Okay, in Indonesia in dulu aja. Pakai bahasa yeah. Indonesia dulu. <laughs> Nanti akan saya bantu. Baik. Jadi uh, saya, saya ada saya berencana untuk mengambil tesis tentang uh, pengaruh pengaruh bioremediasi pada jamur tiram jamur tiram ibu hmm. untuk mendegradasi pada rumah tangga hmm. menurut Uh, menurut narasumber sebaiknya apakah cocok ap apabila saya mem memakai cost link linking teknik atau ada uh, rekomendasi teknik lain untuk uh, tesis saya tersebut ibu? Oke, okay. oke, okay. Acan Wicani, 
I would like to have Amutiara to put a question dealing with her uh, final project with the, the, for the thesis. She is really interested to do a bioremediation using a jamur tiram. Bahasa, bahasa anunya apa, Rek? Wait a minute, I have... Apa, Bu Ita? Pleurotus, Bu. Pleurotus. Oh, pleurotus, okay. Okay, pleurot with the fungi pleurotus. Uh, okay. Pleuro, okay, fungi pleurotus. She want to use this fungi in order to uh, degrade the household waste. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is possible to use the cross linking linking method that you use, or you have the any option? Do you have any suggestion? What kind of method that's better to uh, to manipulate or to increase the ability of this fungi in order to destroy the household uh, uh, biomass. Uh, you use fungi for bioremediation, right? Yes. Not use yes. the enzyme, right? The fungi, um, but Mutiara, it is the, totally the fungi or the, the dengan enzymenya. Using the fungi, fungi. Yeah? Okay, this is the hot fungi, not the enzyme. Okay, so I recommend you to immobilize the fungi with, actually they have some bentonite earth, like here they have, it look like a clay or oh, activate okay. the charcoal is okay also. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you try to cultivate the fungi by using mm -hmm. the liquid culture, you add mm -hmm. them inside mm -hmm. and then the mycelium of the fungi can grow around that particle, so it will be the pellet. Mm -hmm. And then okay. you can use that pellet. It look like the puff ball actually, like uh, the fluffy ball. And then okay. you can use that pellet to pack into the like a column or something and then try to load the water first. This is the easiest way for me to recommend you. You can try. Okay, uh, clear Mutiara? This is really clear. The simple one using the clay, for example, you just are doing that puff balls. Okay, puffy balls like this. Okay, maybe you can find another medium, not only from the clay, maybe another medium. You can take yeah. a look from the PPT from Achanam. They put also another medium they can use as the fungi, as the microbes, how to immobile the and other uh, fungi inside. Okay, okay, please, okay, because, please. yes, thank you. <laughs> so if, if you have more questions, you can send uh -huh. me by line. It's okay. Ah, okay. I will try to answer the question. Okay. Or maybe you can share your email okay, address, Achan. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, I will type my email in the inbox. Yes. Chat. Okay. okay. Yes. This is really nice. Okay. Student, if you have any further question to Achan Nam, please send an email to her. If she has time, she will for sure quick respond of your question. But please, if she is really busy, maybe a little bit delay. But don't worry. She will answer the question. Okay. Please, uh, Achan uh, already typing the email address. Please give applause to Achan for the last lecture today. Hoping that we can get any idea, inspire any kind of research idea in the future. Before I close the moment, I would like to share something to you as our uh, appreciate to Achan. This is one certificate for Achan Awichani. We are really happy. We are really honored having you today, even very short time. Maybe for the next time, I would like, if you still have time, I would like again to invite you in the future, sharing a little bit uh, more detail dealing with your one uh, fungi, how they do and how they work in order to uh, cut any kind of biomass. Okay. Have a nice day, Achana Anam, and also have a nice day for students. Thank you so much for uh, listening, and also Bu Awi, Bu Wita, Pa Arif, and all the lecturers who are joined now in this room. Hopefully, we can do further collaboration with Achan because we got already the lecture from Achan Sahanat, and now we got already the uh, lecture from Achan Nam. And hopefully, we can come up with a really brain, uh, really nice uh, idea uh, to collaborate our research in the future yeah thank you so much and have a nice day bye 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 thank you thank you thank warahmatullahi wabarakatuh okay i count three two one yeah pak arif saya tutup ya Oke Bu, silakan. Oke, okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Acannya sudah pergi. Ya, ketemu lagi ya, Rek ya. Makasih semuanya. Ya. Waalaikumsalam.